just want to make a quick video uh, to show how you disassemble these high pressure fuel pumps. Uh, this is this goes in a mini uh, R56 with an N14 engine, but I think the same pump's also used in a Peugeot THP engine. Can't quite remember two two oh seven, I think. Anyway, I'm sure you'll recognise it if you are watching this video. Uh, there's a lot of debate about why these go wrong so much. Um, as far as I can tell, there's probably two reasons. The first is loss of oil. They use oil inside to help as a hydraulic, uh, as a means to hydraulically pressurise a cylinder. And I'll show you that in a minute. But one of the easy things you can check for loss of oil is this part on the pump. This is a expansion chamber so that when it gets warm the uh, oil has somewhere to go and if you look inside it which you probably can't see on this video anyway inside here there's a little diaphragm and there's also a spring around this part again if you look inside with a good light you'll be able to see the spring coil around here and then a bit further down there's the diaphragm uh, so when the oil gets warm the diaphragm can move up against the pressure of the spring now when the pump is good you should be able to take your digital calipers, these ones are a bit long, but you, know, you can use the depth gauge part. Focus, come on, telephone, focus. No, it doesn't want to. Anyway, uh, you can take the depth gauge part and put it in here very gently, not to damage the diaphragm. And the depth of a good pump at room temperature roughly should be around about uh, no more than... 20 millimeters. Um, <clears throat> this pump, when it was brand new, had a depth of 13 millimeters measured from the outside ring here. Um, obviously, the more oil that's inside, the further, you know, the the more compressed that spring will be, and the diaphragm will be nearer this end. If you lose oil, then the diaphragm will be pressed down more by the spring and go more towards this direction. So you'll have a larger uh, depth here. So I've got a pump that doesn't work and it's got a depth on that uh, on that one of about 24 millimetres. Um, I think there is a document from Mini saying that it shouldn't be anything more than 26, but there's definitely people on the net saying they've had failures before that. However, it's not the only way it can fail. Um, so let's get inside and I'll give you a look. I've already started to open this one, but what you do is take out these Torx screws on the uh, plate here. It's a Torx 20. Doing this one-handed is a little bit tricky. But once you get those out, you can remove the plate. Remove the plate. And then this part, on a different pump, this one was quite firmly fixed in, but you literally just pull it out. There's no screw thread or anything. It's just a seal in here. So, you know, obviously be, be careful not to mar this surface with like massive grippers or something, but yeah, there's no screw thread, you just pull it out. Once you get that out, um, this one's got lots of oil in it already, but if there isn't lots of oil, <laughs> then there's your trouble. So on the back of here, you've got an angled plate called a swash plate. And when, when it gets turned by the cam, Gosh, it's really difficult to do with one hand. When it turns by the cam, you can see the the low side and the high side rotate. And that pushes down, as it turns, it pushes down alternately, alternately on each of these pistons. So this one goes, and then it rotates a bit more, and this one goes, and then that one goes. So it's pushing on each of these pistons here. Um, and when we take these pistons out, that's the little piston. There's a little spring in here as well. Um, I'll take this one out too. And carefully, carefully, and carefully, I'm just going to dump that oil whoop, into the container. You can see this is quite dirty. Now, inside here you've got two cylinders. Those are actually steel bellows. Um, so when the cylinder pushes 
oil into those bellows, they expand. And on the other side of those bellows is the fuel in a chamber. So when the bellows expands, on the other side is the fuel and it gets pressurised. Uh, so you can see why if the oil leaks out, you often from the thermal expansion chamber, it won't have enough oil to pressurise those bellows enough, they won't expand enough and they won't compress the fuel. Um, so there's no direct contact between the oil and the fuel because they're on either side of those steel bellows. However I think there's another probably common failure and that is simply wear and damage. So, so if, if you get a bit of dirt in these pistons and they don't seal in the chamber properly or it just wears down or you know in some way then obviously it won't be able to create as, enough pressure oops, inside the bellows. I'm going to have to fish that out now because I didn't put the spring in yet. This isn't going quite as smoothly as I was hoping. So yeah, if you if you know if this cylinder doesn't seal, then you're not going to get enough compression, just like in a in a you know inside the car engine normally. Um, some people have mentioned putting engine restore in with a little bit of the oil when they replace it, hoping that it will you know improve the compression on those little cylinders. Um, so far, the best report I've read is using. Uh, what was it, Lucas Engine Restore, with, I think, gear oil, synthetic gear oil, 80-90 synthetic gear oil. They didn't mention the ratio. Someone else says to use um, ATX or ATF transmission, you know, automatic transmission fluid um, with a ratio of 70 to 30 W90 oil. But some people have also said that they tried that and it worked for a while and then the oil lost its viscosity. So I don't know exactly what the right oil is, to be honest with you. But so far, the best report I've seen, as I say, is someone using 80-90 synthetic gear oil. Um, and then a little bit of Lucas Engine Restore. Ah, so there you go. Definitely not a guaranteed recovery of the pump <laughs> as a last Hail Mary, really. Um, as for getting it all back together, people have said that if there's any air in the cylinders it's an issue, so what you can do is put the, put the oil in and then somehow you need to put it under vacuum really and remove air, degas it. So I've actually got a vacuum pump, I can put it in a vacuum chamber and let it degas. Um, but if you don't have that, someone said they put uh, oil in sort of halfway, then put some syringes on top and pulled it back. And just kept it there so that the syringe was providing vacuum against it and left it there for 24 hours or overnight. Um, and then topped up the rest of the oil and put it together. The other thing is when you put it together, it's difficult to get enough oil in. You're going to have to, when you put it all back together with the oil and then put this on and then screw it down, the oil is going to want to squirt out. But you need to get enough oil in there to compress the spring in here. So when you put it back together, and screw that plate down, the best thing to do is to uh, retract the spring. I'm just using an Allen key in there to pull back on the spring that's in there. So there's no pressure on that diaphragm and it can just move freely to fill up with oil in the chamber there. There you go, I think that's all the information I've got on this. I uh, hope that helps you guys. Well here's another idea, I haven't tested this but it seems like it would work. If you can't easily retract the spring on that diaphragm um, and actually even if you retract the spring on the diaphragm you still need something to push the diaphragm in so it might actually work better to get a vacuum cleaner and stick it on the uh, over the edge there again doing this with one hand is very difficult but you can see that just fits over on this particular vacuum cleaner turn it on suck the diaphragm and the spring in while you assemble it when you're done you can take it off. Hopefully that will give you a bit of extra room to get the oil in there.